Liverpool actually approach this game, whether they are really, really positive and take the game to Fulham, and how Fulham approach it. I suspect Fulham will approach it. I mean, they're 2-1 down, but they'll approach this with a bit of balance and try and counter, and they have that pace and power, and they have players who can hurt Liverpool, and Liverpool will be very aware of that. Simon Hooper blows the whistle. Liverpool kick off. And by the end of this January night, we will know the lineup for the 2024 Carabao Cup final. It is a dry night, all of that storm has blown away, and it's relatively calm inside, inside uh, Craven Cottage in terms of the weather. But I don't think you'd describe the noise in the stands as calm. The home supporters fired up for this. So Liverpool leading 2-1 on aggregate and Liverpool winning a free kick on the left-hand side. Nights like this, I don't know how many people have said to me tonight, first goal, so important. <laughs> well, it's uh, it's accurate. It's, it is. It's true. Free kick on the left-hand side. So McAllister is over there. Elliot is over there as well. Fulham hold their line on the edge of the penalty area. We wait for the delivery. Elliot comes up, little feet, left-footed ball in, glancing header, drops beyond the far post. I think it was Diaz who got his head to it, Luis Diaz, but it was uh, a cross goal and wide of the far post and behind, and it's a goal kick, and it's nil-nil. Yeah, I actually thought this might be a right foot to McAllister, whipping that in, trying to get the Liverpool forwards across Leno's eye line, but it's a left footer, Elliot who stood the ball up, Diaz attacked it well, decent pace on the cross, but couldn't direct the header. So it is uh, Fulham nil, Liverpool nil. Fulham, who have won five of their last six home games in all competitions. Away from home, form not so clever. They've lost six of their last seven away. But they're at home tonight. Throwing taken down in front of us by the number 84, Bradley. And here's McAllister again on the halfway line. Floodlights shining brightly down. Bradley does well. Steps inside Kearney. Gives it centrally. Gravenberg. Now Diaz on the edge of the box. On his right foot. Little ball to Nunez. Left side of the penalty area. Back on his right foot. Nunez. Who was credited with two assists in the first leg. And scored twice himself on Sunday. Gomez is balling. That is headed away by Robinson. Shot from Elliott. He scuffed it. Hence the cheers from the home supporters. And it was cleared away by Diop. Uh, Liverpool come again in the first choice colours uh, and then more cheers because Elliot trying to scoop the ball into the penalty area popped far too much on that and scooped it fr straight through to Leno who was able to come out and say thank you very much uh, a little bit harsh the cheers for Harvey Elliot you mentioned he uh, started his career at Fulham a Fulham player as a youngster and then you know, has gone to Liverpool. Interesting, you mentioned about Liverpool setup. Nunez is starting as the central striker. Diaz on the left. We wondered whether Elliot may start high up on that right hand side, but as Gakpo and Elliot playing in a central role. William almost nicked the ball back from McAllister centrally. Then Elliot into the challenge, herring around. Comes to Robinson on the left hand side. Robinson being put under pressure by Bradley. It's been won back by Gakpo, but Gakpo showed too much of that to Diop, who very coolly brings the ball forward and manages to evade Gravenberg and then gives it away to Diaz and Liverpool Liverpool look in the mood for an early goal here I must say the body language is uh, you can almost see Jurgen Klopp saying to them strong start strong start you can and Fulham have started with a bit of fear giving the ball away cheaply Liverpool are looking to get this over quickly they are Liverpool with it inside their own half uh, keeping across all of the matches tonight, by the way. Uh, and in the Women's League Cup, our featured match, half-time, it's Manchester City, nil. Manchester United, nil. Uh, misplaced pass by Kwanzaa. Nowhere near anyone else in a red shirt. And that just drifted into the uh, front rows of the, the new Riverside stand on the far side. Fully populated in the lower sections. But uh, we won't see it fully populated until next season when the capacity here will be up around 30,000. Liverpool coming forward with the ball, Van Dijk right footed, lifts a pass which drifts out to the left hand side, Diaz gets it down, Nunez is there as well Diaz now moving in field, the Colombian still going into the central area then clips the ball right across to Bradley Robinson nowhere near him, Bradley drives it over on the volley bit with pace and it bounces out for a throw to Fulham in their own right back position this is 5 Live from the BBC, Fulham nil, Liverpool nil.
and a goal at Ellen Road in the Championship. Betty Glover. It's Leeds 1, Norwich 0. Leeds have started so well. They look so dangerous. They've had quite a few chances. They've looked so dangerous in front of goal. And after Patrick Bamford put an overhead kick wide, he finally had a breakthrough. Uh, his third goal of the season, header at the far post after some brilliant play from Somerville and Ruta. It's Leeds 1, Norwich 0. Yeah, signs of uh, form for Patrick Bamford. And Norwich City, who were in form, 1-0 down. You were watching them, weren't you, at Carroll Road on Saturday? Yep, they, uh, they beat West Brom. Playing a counter-attacking style of football in the Championship, I've got to say, not so sure about that, John. Well, their next opponents will be Liverpool at Anfield in the FA Cup on Sunday. One of our many, many commentaries this weekend and on I the suspect uh, Norwich may play counter-attack there as I well think John they, I think they might do yeah I don't know I'm not an expert like you but uh, I, I think I might agree with you here's Diaz down the left hand side Darwin Nunez the Uruguayan with that glossy black hair tied up at the back of his head Nunez comes in field shoots took a deflection but it was close enough for Leno to be able to drop to his right and hold at the foot of his post. He likes that left-hand channel, doesn't he? Likes to set players up to come inside on that right foot. This shot did take a deflection. And Leno just hanging on to the ball. Fulham haven't got going. They haven't strung two passes together just yet. A lot of that is down to Liverpool and how aggressive they are with the press. But this is one of those games, early stages for Fulham. Just hang on in there. Don't concede. Show well, a bit of resilience. Jimenez has, has barely touched the ball, but he's, he is now. He's inside his own half. Fulham's number seven, the Mexican, plays the ball out to Di Cordova. Reed on the right-hand side. Fulham, a little ball from the edge of the area from Pereira, then Castagna into the near post, and Kalaha goes down and, and fumbles it wide at the foot of his own post. For a split second there, I thought it had ended up in his own net, but it's a corner. Off the run from Castagna. Listen to this crowd, and Kelleher did make a mess of it. It was an awkward bounce, I think. Castagna just keeping it in, whipping the ball in. Kelleher turning it behind for a corner. Fulham nil, Liverpool nil. Pereira with the corner. An outswinger towards the penalty spot, and it's lifted over the top by Polina on the volley. At thigh height, ten yards out, big chance, and he put it over the bar. And Marco Silva looks... So, so incredulous, really, at that miss. That's a huge opportunity. Outswing at right footed from Pereira. Pellini is all on his own. Jurgen Klopp will think, what on earth is going on? And he, it's a cushion volley. He must hit the target. Hits it well over the bar. It's one where you just got to get on top of. That's a big chance. That was a big chance. So it remains nil-nil on the night. And Liverpool have the advantage. Liverpool... If it's a Liverpool-Chelsea final, it would be just like both of the cup finals from the season before last. So you would have a scenario where that to be the case, where in these two major domestic cup competitions, three of five finals would have been between Liverpool and Chelsea, but we're not there yet. Were they, were they both nil-nillers? Nil-nil, one on penalties. 11-10 and 6-5. Liverpool missed one of the penalties that they took in those two finals. Remember who missed it? As Adarabayo has it on the right-hand side, Castagna. Castagna now rolls the ball down the right, but it rolls away from Jimenez. And Liverpool have was got it, the ball on the edge of their own penalty area. Was it Mane? It was. It was, Mane, yeah. it was, yeah. Just in the memory bank there somewhere. Yeah, it was saved by... Oh, who is the goalkeeper? I don't know. Steve told me it was Sadio <laughs> Mane. I'd... Men Mendy. Mendy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fulham nil, Liverpool nil. Here's Kwanzaa with the ball at the back, just uses Gravenberg, and then it goes all the way back to Kelleher, who scored the winning penalty or the decisive penalty. It was Kepa who missed the, the penalty they're, in the no, uh, goal, Yeah, goalkeepers are normally brilliant at taking penalties. As uh, Nunez through the middle, challenged by Adarabayo. Kearney to the left-hand side, here's William into the action for the first time, Robinson on the overlap, Robinson's ball in and a dive and Kelleher got a hand to it, there were players there and that touch from Kelleher was crucial. Yep, you're absolutely right, what a run from Robinson, talked before the game about the Fulham left-hand side, William with the guile, Robinson with the legs, wonderful ball, Keller had just got there first, didn't he? Throwing taken, and it comes to the near post, Van Dijk's underneath that, to head it out towards the uh, 
the far side and it bounces into the supporters over I there. Think, I think it was decoys over Reed who was just lurking to pop that one in had Kelleher not got a touch on that cross. Fulham nil, Liverpool nil. But Liverpool have been under pressure when Fulham have broken after the strong Liverpool start in the match. Ball into the penalty area, Pereira with a touch, back out to the right. Jimenez across, headed away by Kwanzaa and then further away by Gravenberg on the edge of the area. Players went in on that with feet up. Um, Diaz and Adorabayo, and it was actually the Liverpool player who was who was caught by Adorabayo, so it's a free kick to, to, uh, to Liverpool halfway inside their own half. But, I mean, they both went in with feet raised. Yes, they did, I think. Adorabayo actually won the ball. Just seeing the cross from Robinson again, it's a brilliant cross, and I tell you, Decord over Reed was loitering at the far post oh, to pop that one in. Robinson's clearance is absolutely <laughs> smacked Kenny amidships, and uh, he felt that, heard the slap from here. It hit him right in the middle of the stomach, actually. Uh, Kwanzaa. Fortunately, it bounced back to, to Robinson, who cleared it. But now Diaz into the penalty area. Diaz with a shot, it's scrapped in. Lionel couldn't get there. Down to his right. He couldn't keep it out. It squirmed past him and bounced into the back of the net. And it's Liverpool who have the first goal of the night in the second leg and have opened up a 3-1 lead on aggregate. For a nil, Liverpool won. Diaz. Yeah, it's Diaz off the left-hand side. I've got to say, my first impression was that Leno's had an absolute shocker in the Fulham goal. I think it's a soft goal. Diaz driving on inside, and I think his right footer shot takes a deflection, and it squirms under Leno. Not great pace on the shot. Does brilliantly to take the ball down. Big switch of play, but he gets beaten at his near post. Not so sure whether it took a deflection or not, but there's no great pace on the shot. It does take a deflection. The goalkeeper's got to do much better. That's an absolute shocker from Leno yeah, in the did, Fulham did. goal. Yeah. Dear me, it's a, it's a weak right hand. He yeah. gets and he actually palms it onto the post, and in it goes. It was uh, it was poorly defended or well well played for by Diaz, who beat Castagna on the far side. Could he have been stronger, the Belgian right back? Yeah. But then it did take a deflection, significant deflection. But even so. Uh, Leno down to his right, yeah. got a hand onto the post and into the net. Bottom line is, you can say initially Castagna should have done better, but I mean, the biggest fault lies with the goalkeeper. You'd expect a goalkeeper at this level to make the save. Marco Silva complaining to the. Now, is he suggesting that, that was a f he feels that was a foul on Castagna by Diaz? Is he? No, no, that's he, the only I, thing I, mean, I can think. He, he does. He does love a moan, doesn't he, Marco Silva? I think he's on a, I think he's on an FA charge as it is at the moment. And I should stress it's a it's a it looks like a reasonable conversation with Tony Harrington, the fourth official. Play's not restarted yet, but that's not because of VAR, because no. we don't have <laughs> VAR tonight. It's because there's a flare on the pitch and uh, and they've had to bring a man with a red bucket full of sand yeah, to uh, to put it out. It didn't need to be a red bucket, it could have been any coloured bucket of course it could but uh, he's, it's got a lid on it and he's now got a shovel a little spade and he's put that on the uh, on the flare he's put it out he's put the flare in the bucket and he's put the lid back on the bucket it is Fulham nil Liverpool one and players about to resume uh, uh, now there's been a goal in our featured tie in the Women's League Cup, Sani Rajabajai. It's Chloe Kelly who's put Manchester City ahead. It's Manchester City 1, Manchester United women nil. Cross from the right-hand side, really composed with a first touch and hammered into the back of the net. City lead 1-0. And elsewhere in West London, they are underway at Stamford Bridge. Chelsea against Real Madrid in the Women's Champions League. Becky Ives. It's goalless at the minute, but nice tempo to this game. Chelsea definitely had the better of the chances. Frank Kirby slipped a lovely ball to Elvin Cuthbert. She got a shot away, but forced to say from Chavez in the Real Madrid goal. It was on the left-hand side. She went near side, probably instead of cutting it back across keeper Reddit well Jira Wrighton just had a looping shot pushed over so chances coming Chelsea nil Real Madrid nil and that's your choice of listening tonight by the way there's commentary on Sports Extra of the Chelsea Real Madrid match via BBC Sounds on your digital radio Adarabayo had, uh, Diop had to be sharp there inside his own penalty area after he initially delayed the clearance and he had to be quick and take it away from Nunez I, I thought he was right Diop I mean Leno has been at fault for the goal and really shaky there, indecisive. 
and Diop was saying just come and pick it up and he didn't and Diop did the right thing and dealt with it uh, poor clearance from Liverpool conceding a throw in playing it out from the back Robinson takes the throw down the left hand side but certainly the mood here has been affected by the conceding of the opening goal of the second leg by the home side by Fulham who now have a great deal to do a match tonight that they have to win if they're going to win their way through to the final next month at Wembley and right now there's a long way to go in the second leg but they're losing to Luis Diaz's seventh goal of the season the Colombian who did take it well uh, let's see what's happening in the two matches in the Premiership in Scotland tonight uh, to Edinburgh first Daly Barber where it is still goal is between Hibs and Rangers the first chance of the evening falling to Hibs Eli Yuan racing clear but Jack Butland down with a smart save the best chance of the evening so far to Rangers Ravi Matondo with loads of space at the back post he just couldn't get a touch to deflect the ball goalwards and that's why it is still Hibernian nil Rangers nil and it is St Johnston nil Aberdeen nil in the other match being played tonight here's Elliot being booed now for his uh, for leaving Fulham in the lurch when he was only a schoolboy. Here's Elliot again on the right hand side into the penalty area, pulls it across, only half cleared, bounces down and is cleared away by Robinson, who swivelled and cleared it left footed. Liverpool on the edge of the penalty area, Graven Burke, Kenny on him and Graven Burke using his arms as a, as a judge to have, uh, Gakpo is a judge to have fouled Kenny and it's a free kick to Fulham halfway inside their own half. Uh, back to Hibernian, Ailey Barber where the deadlock has been broken and it is the visitors who've gone ahead through left-back Ridvan Yilmaz, his first goal of the season. The ball found him at the back post, the overlapping run, and he struck it past David Marshall. It is Hibernian nil, Rangers 1. Rangers who have still lost just the one match under Philippe Clement, but significant match to lose against Celtic. But uh, one of their matches in hand tonight. Polina with the ball from the halfway line, but far too much on that. It just drifts through into the gloves of Kravin Kelleha. Uh, matches important, final group matches being played in the Africa Cup of Nations tonight as well, where Ivory Coast, the host nation, could be knocked out tonight. Uh, but no goals in the two Group F matches at the moment. Tanzania nil, DR Congo nil, Zambia nil, Morocco nil. Earlier, Mali, South Africa and Namibia confirmed their places in the knockout stage and did Steve Crossman say the Ivory Coast have sacked their Sack manager, manager regardless yeah yeah. pretty ruthless that ruthless <laughs> it is so I don't know who's in charge now uh, so with the, the scores as they are they would be going out because they need uh, they need Zambia to lose here is McAllister McAllister back out to the right hand side to Bradley but certainly the mood here has been affected everyone is well aware of the fact as we'd already said Chris the first goal was so important and it was Liverpool yeah. who scored it and most things if not everything I think had to go alright for Fulham this evening but that's a shocker of a goal to concede from Leno it should have done better it, it's now just about focusing hanging on in there and getting the next goal from Fulham and going from there really but what, what do we know we know they can't afford to concede another one that will be absolutely game over so I suspect they'll still be pretty balanced in their approach Fulham yeah they're absolutely what do we say walking a tightrope on the precipice whatever cliche you want to lose if they let in another goal if Liverpool score another one it would be very difficult to see Fulham reaching the final long ball out towards the right hand side Castagna gets up wins the header well this time against Diaz but Liverpool are vibrant here Jurgen Klopp has got the attitude just right here tonight Jurgen Klopp in his managerial career Jurgen Klopp has been involved in 13 semi-finals he's lost one one out of 13 that's not a bad record here's Bradley Bradley low in field towards Elliot and, and the movement is so good from Liverpool confidence they're a team who are on a good winning run coming into this match five-point lead at the top of the Premier League they've won their last five matches now Kwanzaa's won the ball back centrally groans from the Fulham supporters it's over there to the left-hand side to the goal scorer Diaz who actually took a poor touch and so Fulham were able to clear through Adarabayo to the halfway line but Jimenez misjudges that you've said it already tonight Chris you know a couple of weeks ago against Arsenal 
Arsenal went 1-0 up and Fulham yeah. turned it around. And they still have to believe. They've got players who are capable of, of hurting Liverpool. They know Liverpool are going to dominate the ball pretty much. But when they do count, counter on a, uh, a couple of occasions this evening, which they have done so far, they have looked a real danger. Van Dijk hits a great-looking pass, and Nunez heads it right across the face of goal. Gravenberg couldn't get there, and if he could, he would have had a tap-in. What a ball that is from Virgil van Dijk. He, and didn't he just know it? He, oh, he did. Had a little... Yeah. There was a, he held the follow-through. Yeah. Wasn't it? Strutting like a peacock there. Lovely diagonal ball. He just he's just heavy with the header. Oh, and Nunez runs in behind on the diagonal. Gravin Burke is is up alongside him. Tries a little cushion header down into his path, but too much on the header. It was like watching, I don't know, Alex Stewart hit an on drive and hold his poles because he knew that he timed it brilliantly. He has McAllister. McAllister back towards the halfway line Gomez in field towards Gakpo and then back towards the ha halfway line obviously the test series in India starts off in the morning uh, so you'll be able we'll have all the news during the course of breakfast uh, you'll be able to follow it by on the uh, BBC Sport website and app we've got our man Stefan Schemelt who is there in Hyderabad and every day at the close of play test match special podcast uh, on sounds with Jonathan Agnew Michael Vaughan and Deep Das Gupta, so every night of the Test Series. Uh, ball cleared from the edge of the six-yard box by Leno, who was caught out for the goal. McAllister playing it back through the middle, and uh, he was in an offside position, Darwin Nunez, and it's a free kick to Fulham on the edge of their own penalty area. Listen, Fulham have threatened on a couple of occasions they've been able to get down the field, but this match is being played in the Fulham half. Mostly, and you know, credit to Liverpool, they are essentially strangling Fulham aren't they Fulham just cannot get out they've been careless with the passing but that's because of the Liverpool press and then Liverpool straight back onto them and what Chris is describing has just happened again Fulham with the ball inside their own half up it goes to the halfway line but Liverpool all over Jimenez winning the ball back McAllister McAllister's been a big presence in this game already the Argentine World Cup winner in the central role out to, to Bradley and now Elliot back into his own half to to Van Dijk I think he's getting better and better McAllister in the Liverpool jersey really prominent at the weekend ran that midfield and at the vitality against Bournemouth yep when they won 4-0 to establish that 5 point lead Robinson just a little foul by Gak Posa to break it to Fulham inside their own half uh, yeah, so the cricket in the morning, uh, tennis breakfast will be back on Sports Extra, it's the women's semi-finals in the morning, so that's on Sports Extra all morning, live from Melbourne, and, and our FA Cup commentaries, our fourth round commentaries, begin tomorrow night, uh, Sports Extra though, for the uh, Bournemouth-Swansea match this time tomorrow, but it is the League Cup tonight, and Liverpool already in position here, with now a clear lead in the tie, by three goals to one, on aggregate after that early goal that Luis Diaz goal the vibrant Colombian who uh, is full of energy playing on the left hand side Diaz certainly think Castagna could have done better against him in the in the initial challenge so Castagna could have done better yeah. and then certainly Leno could have done yeah, better it was a long diagonal ball and you think Castagna should read the flight of it better Diaz read the flight perfectly got it down on his chest drove the inside and got a bit lucky with the deflection deflected shot but blimey I've said a few times Leno you'd expect far oh, better from your goalkeeper Fulham nil Liverpool won on the night Marco Silva on the far side in the uh, in his Fulham black with the the white trim urging his team on he's only had one win over Jurgen Klopp in his time as a manager long pass this time McAllister overhits it and it bounces through to Leno yep one win out of nine matches against Jurgen Klopp and that was his first one when he was the, the whole City manager and I remember I mentioned it in the first leg when he lost 5-2 as the Everton manager to Liverpool at Anfield he was sacked in the morning here's Robinson playing the ball up towards the little figure of William who again is another man who's not been able to get into this game Fulham need that Diop plays it up from the back Jimenez wins the header but nods it back into his own half and Liverpool have got possession now. again here's Gravenberg 
Uh, Jones, by the way, is on the bench. He's OK, despite limping off at the weekend. They found that it wasn't too serious at all. So Jones, like Robertson, on the bench tonight. No Salah, no Alexander-Arnold, but so far, no problem. Here's Elliot. Elliot taking it on, left-footed ball in. Oh, it's taken a double deflection over the bar. Gakpo, but the offside flag was up against him. And Leno came diving for it. Nice. I think he punched it into Gakpo. And it bounced off him over the top yeah. of his own barn. If that had ended up in the net, that would have been an embarrassment as well, although it would have been ruled out. Yeah, let's have a look. I think Gakpo, oh, I tell you, it's very close. I think he was just offside, but Leno, like a flying pig, there coming out, making a complete mess of that once again. Dear me. Yeah, no VAR tonight. Just to repeat that, if you've missed that, as uh, Fulham win a free kick for Graven Burkers challenge on Palina. he's also not really been able to get into the game so no no VAR there is no away goals rule these days so you can forget about that uh, but if the score were to be level at the end of the 90 minutes we would have extra time and then the possibility of a penalty shootout but uh, as we say Fulham would have to win for, for that to be the case here is uh, Adarabayo Nice footwork from him. Then Kearney. Kearney finds Robinson on the left-hand side. Here's a little bit of something for the Fulham fans to get positive about. William has a scurry, but plays it into Bradley, who boxes it out for a throw. Just down to our left. Two or three people get to their feet. They've got their black and white cardboard clappers. They give them a clap. William hoists a ball out towards De Cordova Reed, but Gomez watched it, did well, turns, plays it away. And then Diaz has been tugged back by... Castagna, who might have been fortunate not to be yellow carded for that, pulling him back as Liverpool were breaking away, but it's a free kick. Yep, Diaz Gomez. got his body in well. Gomez dealt with that high crossfield ball from William really well. Plucked the ball out of the sky and talked before, didn't we, about Gomez's importance to this Liverpool team. He can play anywhere, Joe Gomez. Yeah, well, you know, Chilwell came back last night. Shaw's fitness has, has not been great this season, although he's back in the picture now. But Gomez is making himself a little bit of a possibility from an England point of view. It's been a long time since he's been involved, but he is playing well. William playing it back down into the, his own full-back position. Robinson goes down, that's not a free kick. Liverpool have got it back. back gap point of the penalty area. Back to Elliot. Gakpo just outside the box, scoops it into the area, Nunez shoots against the post, and then it's fired in by Diaz, but the offside flag is up, and it would not have counted if, du if Nunez had scored, the flag was up against Nunez. Yeah, I talked about the possibility of Fulham causing Liverpool problems down the Liverpool right, but Liverpool are causing Fulham problems and that Fulham left, and... Elliot and Gakpo linking up really well. Gakpo spotting the run of Nunes, who is a yard and a half offside, who actually swivels. A bit of an overhead kick down into the floor and off the post, but Gakpo and Elliot linking up well, not for the first time. Stand by, Chris. More news on Norwich from Betty Glover. Lead still leading Norwich 1-0 thanks to Bamford. Could have had a second. Archie Gray running rings around the Norwich defence. Nice one to with James before putting the ball over the head of a defender, which he then collected the other side, then crossed it into the area. It was cleared, but his skills were very much appreciated by the home fans here. Leeds 1, Norwich 2. Uh, Kearney for Fulham. Little ball infield to William. Halfway inside the Liverpool half, this is. And then Jimenez gets nothing out of Bradley. Excellent from the uh, the young right back. However, William now. William wriggles his way through. Jimenez on the left. Whipped the ball across. Came off the head of, of uh, Van Dijk. But actually, Jimenez had straight into an offside position. So it's a free kick to Liverpool. All very hurried from Fulham. Excellent from William, though. It was dancing feet from William. Ball poked into him on that left-hand side. Jinx passed a couple of Liverpool midfielders and feeds the ball to Jimenez, but Jimenez has just gone early. Made that run early, offside. Still Hibs nil, Rangers one. St Johnston nil, Aberdeen nil. Still Chelsea nil, Real Madrid nil in the Champions League. That's on Sports Extra. Still Manchester City one, Manchester United nil in the Women's League Cup. And here at Craven Cottage, under the lights, Fulham nil, Liverpool one. So we're looking at a, a Chelsea Liverpool. Carabao Cup final and uh, Liverpool have been the better team they deserve what they've got here and now they're looking for more with Gravenberg in the centre circle 
little ball through to Elliot and then Elliot plays it back into his defence to Van Dijk who glides forward with it over to the left hand side and Diaz has actually come back into his own half he plays it in field McAllister in tight space there is able to find the pass over the halfway line but then under pressure that's given away and Fulham break come on they shout behind us in the crowd William has been able to get the pass to Jimenez who curls a low ball across but straight into the path of Van Dijk who was able to calmly clear it away they were a little fortunate there, Fulham, with the break of the ball, but they didn't take advantage, and now Liverpool are sweeping forward. Gakpo to Gravenberg. Gravenberg almost to the edge of the area. Diaz with a low shot from the angle that Leno is able to drop on this and make a safe save this time. Yeah, Liverpool breaking on Fulham this time. Gravenberg with a driving run centrally, pops the ball out to the left-hand side for Diaz to come on to it first time with his right foot. It's a tame finish straight at Leno. But at the other end, a real lack of conviction when Jimenez did have the opportunity to cross the ball in. Lack of confidence there from Jimenez. Didn't really believe he could pick out Decord over Reed at the far post. So Liverpool in control on the night and in the tie. Here's Polina. Still plenty of time for Fulham. But it's got to be better than that. Polina heading a long pass, decoed over Reed, didn't even sprint after it because he knew it had been over hit. Liverpool leading 2 1 from the first leg, and, uh, and only 25% of teams who've lost the first leg of a League Cup semi final have gone on to reach the final. And uh, right now, it looks like Fulham are going to be in the 75%. Here's McAllister in the centre circle McAllister just tapping the ball to Gomez quickly gets the ball under control gives it to Diaz but then centrally in steps Adarabayo and now forward from Pereira but again that doesn't work and it's not happening for Fulham no and that that ball um, which Polinia tried a couple of moments ago to decor to over Reed who's up against Joe Gomez I mean I suspect Gomez has got the measure of decor to over Reed in a, in a foot race anyway that's a miracle ball. Fulham nil, Liverpool one. Here's Kearney. Nice flick from him. William helps the ball on. Jimenez gets his head down, shoots for goal, and Kelleher goes down, pushes it across the penalty area, and it's kept in play by Bradley, who beat Robinson to it. Plays it forward for Gakpo. Gakpo's early long pass. What a good pass to Nunez. But Adarabayo came across and timed the tackle well on the Uruguayan right on the edge of the box and put it out for a throw. Oh, it's a lovely ball. A lovely ball from Gakpo. Halfway inside his own half. Measured, beautifully weighted to Nunez, who has that blistering pace, doesn't he? Adarabayo got across. A little fist pump when he made the challenge. Crucial challenge. At the other end, Keller, Kelleher... I think he was clean with his goalkeeping there from the effort from Jimenez, right-footed effort from 25 yards. No real power on the shot and made a bit of a mess of it, Kelleher. Fulham nil, Liverpool one, Liverpool on the attack. Bradley on the right-hand side, he's impressing again, Bradley. Set up a goal at the weekend. Connor Bradley, Northern Ireland international. This is his fourth start of the season. Started three in a row. Looked good in the first leg as well, actually, at Anfield when he came in, in the absence of the injured Alexander-Arnold. And Elliot now playing it all the way back towards the uh, the halfway line where Kelleher comes and uh, and takes possession of the ball and passes it to, to Kwanza, who will give it back to the, the Liverpool goalkeeper, who's now being chased back to the edge of his penalty area, and then plays not such a good pass out to Gomez, who miscontrolled it, and that's given Fulham encouragement here with uh, the ball on the right-hand side, infield towards Kearney. Kearney couldn't get it under control, still going. Kearney gets there first near the dead ball line on the right-hand side, then back up to the right flank to Castagna. Di Cordova Reed further back towards the halfway line is then bundled over by Diaz. And that's a, a free kick to Fulham, 10 yards inside the, the Liverpool half. Uh, back to Hibs Rangers, Ailey Barba. And there is a second goal of the evening right on the stroke of half-time and it has gone for the visitors once again. Todd Cantwell doubling Rangers' lead here at Easter Road with a blistering effort that flew past David Marshall. He was given far too much time to pick his spot and as we uh, await the half-time whistle, it is Hibernian nil, Rangers 2. So Rangers on their way to, to victory, it would seem, at Hibs. 
here Fulham nil, Liverpool 1, 5 Live from the BBC, we're on BBC Sounds as well, of course you'll find 5 Live on there and you can listen to the live radio, all of the BBC's live radio. Here's the free kick then, which is played into the edge of the box, but headed across the box by Kwanzaa for Liverpool. And then Jimenez is, is all over the back of, uh, of Gomez. Out of play for a throw-in, Fulham take it into the box. Jimenez goes down, he was being leaned into by Gravenberg. The crowd want a penalty, the players aren't so convinced. Fulham it's still in possession. Willian, quick feet from him, cutting in, right to left. Shoots left-footed, but straight at Kelleher, who's able to gather the ball into his chest. Decent strike from Willian, cutting in off the right-hand side this time. 25 yards out, left-footed effort, but I've got to say my first impression of Jimenez... There was slight contact, but he's looking to go down. John, you know what I'm going to say. Mm-hmm. He's better, better than, than that. that. Yeah, he was he was looking for the contact from Gravenberg. He was behind him, he was leaning into him, there but not to, enough. No, there has to be sufficient contact and sufficient force. There wasn't on that occasion. 1-0 Liverpool lead, the early Diaz goal that was fumbled by Leno onto a post and into the net. And uh, here is Adarabayo after Nunez loses out in the uh, in the challenge. Fulham with the ball at the back. It is half time. Hibbs nil, Rangers two. So Yilmaz and Cantwell, the goal scorers. Uh, Adarabayo, I enjoyed his little celebration when he put that challenge in on on uh, Nunez on the edge of the area. His tackle celebrated his own tackle. As yeah, Fulham win a free kick what? on the far side. Deco over Reed wins the free kick. What's the game coming to, John? <laughs> it's become, it's become, celebrating tackles. It's become John? a bit of a thing, hasn't it? Yeah, for, it for like not not forward players to celebrate their little victories. Have you noticed? Do they feel left out? No, I think maybe they do. Do, do you like it? I'm not sure if I like it or not. I suspect our younger listeners will probably enjoy it. And uh, just, you know, just so that might be reason enough for us to embrace yeah. it. Here's Decod over Reed, giving the ball out to Robinson. And now William on the left hand side against Bradley slips the ball through. Robinson's ball across, but Decod over Reed came all the way across, but so did Van Dyke. And Van Dyke got the first touch, it's kept in play and then volleyed away downfield to the halfway line by Gakpo. Fulham have, have got the ball back. Fulham need to. Fulham need to find a foothold in the match really and, and they are they are threatening to do that as half time approaches six seven minutes to go to the break here now on the right hand side it's Pereira drags the ball back looks for the run of Castagna but he won't beat or he shouldn't beat Gomez to that in fact he's fouled Gomez or is he given as a goal kick the ball runs behind it's a goal kick goal kick to Liverpool who lead by one goal to nil it's just in the, in the final third as it's been that final ball where Fulham have been found wanting good underlap this time on the left hand side from Robinson who got the cross in but guess who was there Virgil van Dijk what a season he's had so far playing with different partners for the most weeks and he looks like he's back to his near best Liverpool are chasing success on four fronts and they've got home tie in the FA Cup against Norwich on Sunday. Here's Liverpool coming forward again. Bradley on the right-hand side. Bradley against Robinson, but plays the ball through. And this, this breaks down for Liverpool. The pass just rolls on through. Gakpo wasn't going to reach that. And it's a goal kick to Fulham. This is Fulham's seventh domestic cup semi-final. So, yes, they had the triumph under Roy Hodgson, that famous European run all the way to the final of the Europa League. But in terms of domestic semi-finals... They have uh, been involved in six and won just one. And that got them through to the 1975 FA Cup final, their only previous major domestic cup final. Here is uh, Kearney. Oh, but passes it behind William. And it's out of play for a throw to Liverpool. Another goal in the, in the Women's League Cup. The Manchester derby, Sani Radrovadjala. Well, it's Manchester City who look like they'll be heading to the quarter-finals. They've scored a second. Lauren Hemp following up after a save from the goalkeeper. 72 minutes on the clock, Manchester City women 2, Manchester United women 0. Uh, Fulham win the ball back after the Liverpool throw. William and then Decord over Reed. Strong challenge by Gomez. Good one, though. 
and Liverpool have got the ball back inside their own half. That, that semi-final at Fulham won, that only domestic semi-final success, Chris, that was in the, uh, in the replay at Main Road against Birmingham City. And, and the winning goal came at the end of extra time with eight seconds left from John Mitchell. And that, that won Fulham through to the FA Cup final at, at Wembley in 1975. And they've, they've not been near a domestic final since. As Gomez shoots from distance, but that is deflected up and over the top into the Hammersmith end. And it is... Uh, a corner to Liverpool. He, he hasn't scored for Liverpool, am nope, I right? Nope, Joe in over Gomez. 200 appearances. Let's have a look at this on replay. Oh, he's hammered that. And well, he was you, on target. You never you, know with Leno in goal this evening. Yeah. As you may have heard me say, Chris, you might have heard me say in recent commentaries, I, I have looked into the future and predicted a Joe Gomez goal soon. I think he'll score this season. <laughs> Is that not called law of averages? <laughs> well, I call it a bold prediction. Elliot to take this corner. It's an out swinger. Uh, what's happened there? The referee, assistant, I don't think he's blown his whistle. The assistant on the far side is pointing across at what? I don't know. Okay. It's got a thumbs up, though. Right, this corner is going to be retaken. Liverpool are leading 1 0, looking for a second goal that. That could wrap up the semi-final if they score it before half-time. Elliot's ball in, headed away by Adarabayo, chested down by McAllister. Now the ball in high from Elliot from the left-hand side. Adarabayo got up, did well actually, headed it away under pressure. Liverpool in the red have got got the ball back. Gakpo trying to win it against two defenders. Then into the box, Van Dijk is there. Uh, Kit Ken, he's claiming that he was found on the edge of the box. Van Dijk tries a Cruyff turn that doesn't come off the Dutchman. And Fulham are able to clear it away up to William. William infield. And now uh, Kenny. Oh, Kenny went diving into the tackle and caught McAllister, who'd gone into it himself. It was a 50 50. But, but Kenny certainly went in with his feet raised. And I see the yellow card is already out from Hooper. And McAllister, I, I think he's OK, although he is feeling his right knee. Well, Kenny is saying to Simon Hooper that uh, the referee. How am I supposed to follow through? But his feet do come off the floor. It does look reckless to me. And I think you know there'll be those, no VAR today, who would possibly view that. Let's have a look at the replay. It's the follow through. He slips a little bit. Those who, I say, initially I thought maybe some would view that. Yellow, card, yellow card's the right decision. He, I think yellow's right, Absolutely. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I think he slipped a little bit on the follow-through as well, and that's where his sort of anger is. Yeah. Uh, news from the Africa Cup. Well, McAllister just received treatment here just to see how, how he is. He's come off worst in this, so we're just keeping an eye on that. But the news from uh, Africa Cup of Nations from the Ivory Coast is uh, Zambia nil, Morocco 1. So Morocco, who are already qualified, but that would mean that uh, Ivory Coast would be going through. And it's Hakim Ziyech who scored the goal for Morocco. Will they be making the call? Get the manager back. <laughs> yes. Come back. All is forgiven. So, uh, McAllister just getting to his feet. And he's already had an injury this season, which I think has interrupted his progress in his first season as a Liverpool player. But uh, as he recovers himself, let's go to Ellen Road again and Betty Glover. It's Leeds 1, Norwich 0 at half-time. Patrick Bamford's header is the difference. His third goal in his last four games. Could have had a second, but whacked it wide. Leeds have been playing the better football. Lots of passing, moving the ball really nicely. Norwich have grown into this, though. A couple of chances. And just before the whistle, Gabriel Sara sent a scuffed effort wide. Leeds leading 1-0 at the break. And what's happening in the Sports Extra commentary match over at Stamford Bridge, Becky Ives? Chelsea nil, Real Madrid nil. Chelsea much more dominant, nothing to show for it right now. Fran Kirby just created, but she decided to cut it back to Erin Cuff, but it's slightly behind her, she couldn't get it out from her feet. Wasted chance, Emma Hayes looking slightly frustrated on the touchline below me. Chelsea nil, Real Madrid nil. Still Hibs nil, Rangers 2, St Johnston nil, Aberdeen nil. And it is 1-0 to Liverpool here, with half-time approaching. So Liverpool have got Fulham more or less where they want them. They'd love a, a second goal, of course. Van Dijk swinging the ball out to the right-hand side. McAllister is OK, that's the news on him. He's uh, walked off the pitch just down here to our right and is, uh, is waiting to be allowed onto the field. But, of course, referee Hooper has to wait for the 30 seconds. And, uh, and the Fulham fans full of sympathy from McAllister. Throwing is taken. Bradley 
Bradley gets it back on the right hand side low ball whipped across Adarabayo had to get there but he did on the stretch Nunez was behind him well defended yep really good defending the cross was excellent from the right hand side he said do you think that's fair that John that McAllister's injured has to go off and wait for 30 seconds and he was the one who was who was I feel, I feel it's quite a cynical ruling that yeah. because it's a ruling that is designed to crack down on people who feign injury William he has Jimenez on the left hand side Jimenez taking it on but he's shown too much of that to Kwanzaa who back heels it into Jimenez who takes it on and crosses it left footed and Gomez had to be sharp there he wasn't quite sure of his bearings he got a foot to it to clear it still in the area William half a shout for handball that was optimistic against McAllister and now Robinson's over on it and Bradley will allow it to run out of play for a, a throw in now the fourth official Tony Harrington is there on the far side five minutes of added time at the end of the first half and, and Liverpool with the ball in their own right back area and uh, one Fulham fan down to our left on his own holds up one of those clappers and if you unfurl it it reads come on Fulham which is what he's done clearance by Kwanzaa Palinha Fulham need more from him such an important player Van Dijk steps in a flick from goal scorer Diaz into the path of Diop flick from Palinha that was good now Castagna uh, and Castagna dragged the ball back and then was fouled by McAllister and, uh, and the home fans want a yellow card for McAllister to even things up after Kearney was booked referee Hooper marches across has a good think about it and it's only a free kick it's just a foul McAllister goes to ground he doesn't get much of Castagna he does foul him but that's not a yellow card I think Marco Silva is unhappy with that decision but Fulham need something and they need something quickly well in that famous last semi-final they were involved in in the Europa League they were 1-0 down against Hamburg in the second leg and won it 2-1 free kick Pereira plays it in defenders go for it on the edge of the box comes off the head of either Kwanzaa or McAllister the two of them together and that looped away wide of the goal for a corner to Fulham in added time at the end of the first half and the words flash on the hoardings come on Fulham now red and then white and Pereira with that blonde tinged hair waits little steps from him Pereira's corner towards the penalty spot Diop was after it but defenders got to him then it's blocked forward by Kearney back into the Liverpool box away from Bradley Adarabayo loses out to Elliot. then Diaz jumps against Pereira forward from Robinson headed back away towards the halfway line by Van Dijk and now Darwin Nunez has got it on the left-hand side. Two goals against Bournemouth at the weekend. Crossfield pass from Nunez. Superbly taken down by Elliott. And Elliott's left-footed ball in. This could be danger. Oh, Gakpo. Uh, Gravenberg got a foot to it. And actually, he might have been better served to leave it for the arriving Nunez behind him because Gravenberg deflected it away. Yeah, booing Harvey Elliott. And he... he plucks the ball out of the sky brilliant crossfield ball from Nunes it goes over Elliot and he sticks out his little left boot just takes it down with these head up on the inside and you're right Gravenberg goes for the ball he's stretching Nunes in behind him suspect he would have had a decent attempt on goal there yeah I don't think Nunes was very happy about that as the ball bounces rolls back into the Fulham penalty area so we're well into the five minutes of added time at the end of this first half we're going to be talking to Mark Ramprakash by the way at half time about the uh, start of the test series so that's coming up during the, the half time break and um, tomorrow night Bournemouth Swansea our FA Cup commentaries they begin on Sports Extra tomorrow so listen out for that Sports Extra Bournemouth against Swansea as uh, Fulham have the ball inside their own half just on the edge of their own penalty area back it is with Diop Diop playing in the absence of Bassi they're big misses Bassi and uh, Iwobi who are at the Cup of Nations with Nigeria but of course Liverpool have got this long list of absentees as well not least the main man himself who will have to see if he's going to be fit should Egypt reach the final the long ball from Leno who was at fault for the only goal Fulham needed everybody to be absolutely at their best here tonight and that was a poor goal to concede in, on several fronts. Comes back to Diop inside his own half. Only a few seconds of the first half to go. Fulham are going to have it all to do in the second period. 
Liverpool with a 3-1 aggregate lead. Here's Kearney. Kearney looks to Robinson. Robinson now towards the corner of the box. Now William on the left-hand side uh, behind Kearney and Liverpool might actually break away on the counter-attack. Graven Burke forward over the halfway line to Nunez. Nunez shows a, a, a burst of speed but doesn't get past Adora Bayo, who's been excellent in the first half, I must say. There is a bit of talk that he might be on his move. He's out of contract at the end of the season, Adarabayo. He has Pereira goes through a couple of challenges. What have court. you heard, John? That sounds like you've heard something. What you're saying is that he's out of contract at the end of the season. They would they would miss him, wouldn't they? And oh, there's absolutely, been they'd miss yeah, him. Yeah. They'd miss his, his fist pumping when he makes a tackle. Yeah, they would. But someone else would be the benefit of that. Uh, Pereira might have just said something out of turn to Simon Hooper, who's called him across to have a word and there was talk, there was talk of, at the end of the transfer window in the summer Tottenham and Monaco were mentioned for Adarabayo now apparently Milano are having a little look so they say Milan uh, Milano Monaco <laughs> or Tottenham or Tottenham transfer gossip daily every morning during January podcast on uh, on sound as of course is the Fantasy 606 podcast Chris here is uh, Pereira, long free kick, he's overhit that all the way through, caught by Kelleher. And uh, there's the half-time whistle, and Liverpool are on course. Liverpool are on course for the final again. Jurgen Klopp looks sprightly. He's running across the pitch towards the, the cottage in the corner and the dressing rooms down there. Uh, we've had well done, Liverpool, in the first 45 minutes. They've got that absolutely right. And Fulham have got a lot to do, Chris Sutton. Oh, yes, not. yeah, yeah. I was just saying hello to someone who I haven't seen for years. Uh, yes, they, they have. Liverpool have, have had real control of that first half. The disappointment from Fulham's perspective, it was, a, it was lousy goalkeeping from Leno, which gifted Liverpool the goal from, uh, from Diaz. Fulham have to approach the second half differently. They're going to have to go for broke at, uh, at some stage, but Liverpool, in possession, out of possession, have been the better side and deservedly go in ahead. Fulham, huge second half. Yep, they're going to have to call on the spirit of that Hamburg semi-final, that famous tie against Juventus, if they're going to turn this around. Liverpool are 1-0 up at half-time, and that means they are 3-1 up on aggregate. So, uh, so Fulham, remember, have got to win on the night, otherwise they will be going out at the semi-final stage. So there we are, Fulham nil, Liverpool won at half-time. And Steve Crossman is here with us inside the Johnny Haynes stand. Chris, we are one bad burnt Leno error separated from saying good half that for Fulham, caused a couple of problems all to play for. That was so big. It, it, it was, and we spoke to Paul, uh, before the game about everything needing to be virtually perfect for Fulham. We know that, that they are a capable counter-attacking team. I think we all understood the way that, that the game would pan out, but it was such a soft goal uh, for Liverpool to score. Brilliant from Jurgen Klopp's perspective. Come silence this crowd, get an early goal and, and, and put this tie to bed. Liverpool still have work to do, but in possession, out of possession, they have been superior. For Fulham, it's about changing the game plan in the second half, and they're going to have to change the game plan and, and sort of go for broke as far as I can see and of course you play against a team like Liverpool who are so so devastating uh, going forward that that has its risks but Fulham are going to have the risk Liverpool look like what they are a team who's been there seen it done it but I suppose that's that's almost doubly impressive in the sense that right next to us here because we're only about 15 yards away from the touchline we've watched Konza playing right centre-back and Bradley playing right-back, two kids in this Liverpool team, and they don't look out of position at all there. No, um, no, you're absolutely right. Bradley um, has had a very good first half. I mean, you you think he's up against William, uh, a player who has tremendous nice intelligent player. Uh, you have Robinson marauding on, but, uh, but, but Bradley defensively looks really switched on. He's gone forward at the right time. He's, he's uh, you know, certainly picked his moments. Liverpool, I mean, you, you look at their strength in depth, and this was always going to be the test uh, for them when, when they had key players out this season. And, I mean, tonight against, a, you know, a good Fulham side, they are they are still so, so dominant. You you, you think at the weekend there's there's noise about Soberslai coming back, Alexander-Arnold coming back, Robertson on the bench this evening, who's been out for, for over three months now. 
So Liverpool getting players back, but you know the first eleven, whoever they pick at this moment in time, they are you know very very strong and dominant whoever they play. Strength, depth, and a two-goal aggregate advantage with a quarter of this semi-final tie left to play at Craven Cottage. Fulham nil, Liverpool won on the night, 3-1 to Jurgen Klopp's side on aggregate. Second half commentary, of course, on the way with us here on Five Live Sport. On Five Sports Extra, there's commentary tonight of Chelsea against Real Madrid in the Women's Champions League. Becky Ives. It's goalless at the break here at Stamford Bridge. And Chelsea are playing well. They've just got nothing to show for it. Erin Cuthbert, Jira Wright, and both of four saves from Chavas in the Real Madrid goal. Nick Charles has headed over and they've really restricted Real Madrid's chances at the other end. Just a reminder, a win for Chelsea would put them through to the quarterfinals of the Champions League. They've got to find a way in the second half. Will they look to Lauren James, who currently sits on the bench at this moment in time? Big second half on the way. Goals at the break. And there, of course, is that Manchester derby going on in the Women's League Cup. Sani Rudravagula. Just a minute to go of normal time. It's Manchester City who will be into the quarterfinal straight away. They lead by two goals from nil. Chloe Kelly and then Lauren Hemp have done that for them. Manchester United still have a chance of the best place, second place team. But yeah, that's what we're going to have to be looking for at the moment. Two minutes to go, Manchester City two and United nil. Uh, elsewhere in the Championship, half-time Leeds won Norwich nil in the Scottish Premiership at the break. It's Hibs nil, Rangers two, St Johnston nil, Aberdeen nil. Uh, UEFA Women's Champions League, other scores for you, Roma 2, Bayern 2, PSG 3, Ajax 1, and in Chelsea's group, Hacken 0, Paris 0 is a full-time score. Remember, a big story brewing in the Africa Cup of Nations this evening. Uh, it's Zambia 0, Morocco 1 in the final group game. If that stays that way, it means that Ivory Coast, the host nation, will just squeak through into the knockout round despite the fact they've just sacked their manager. And the man who's replaced him uh, has come from the coaching staff, Emma C. Fye, who played eight games for Reading in the mid noughties So there you go. So he's the man who might be leading Ivory Coast somehow into the next stage of the Africa Cup of Nations. But they've got to hope that Morocco hang on to that lead. Uh, history made earlier tonight. You might have heard Namibia booking their place in the knockout stages for the first time ever, thanks to a goalless draw with Group E winners Mali and South Africa have gone through this afternoon as well. We'll be back here at Craven Cottage. We'll be talking England cricket after the news with Jill McKenzie. Listen on BBC Sounds. This is BBC Radio 5 Live. Thank you, Steve. Good evening. Norfolk police say two girls who were found dead alongside other family members in a house died of knife wounds. The bodies of 12-year-old Jasmine and 8-year-old Natasha Kuczynska were found in Kossi near Norwich on Friday morning. Officers are treating their deaths and that of the woman found with them as murder. They say the death of the man, Bartłomiej Kuczynski, is not suspicious and they're not looking for anyone else in connection with the murders. Researchers say that thousands of children who became overweight or obese during the pandemic could face lifelong consequences. Obesity rates rose sharply among 10 and 11-year-olds in England and haven't returned to pre-pandemic levels. Our health reporter is Aurelia Foster. Researchers say it amounts to an extra 56,000 children. Based on current economic data, they say this will cost the UK economy around £8 billion over time, partly due to healthcare costs and lack of productivity. The government says it is taking action to encourage healthier food choices. Russia's accused Ukraine of shooting down one of its military planes. It says everyone on board died and 65 passengers were Ukrainian prisoners of war. Ukraine has blamed Russia, saying it had not been told to ensure safe airspace over the region. The Conservative MP who called for Rishi Sunak to be replaced has told BBC News he's acting alone. Sir Simon Clarke said he wasn't surprised by the hostile reaction, but he hinted that more Conservative MPs could follow his lead. No one likes the guy who's shouting iceberg, but I suspect that people will be even less happy if we hit the iceberg. And we are on course to do that. I think that is the point which I just need to land with colleagues respectfully and calmly, is that we are not at the moment responding to the situation with the seriousness that it warrants. And Holocaust survivors have told MPs they don't want a memorial and education centre built in central London. Campaigners are worried the development would overshadow a nearby anti-slavery monument. BBC Five Live. The FA Cup. Wow, you will not 
see a better goal. This game belongs to all of us. This really matters. The FA Cup continues this weekend with fourth round action, including Tottenham v Manchester City, Everton versus Luton, and Liverpool versus Norwich. He's absolutely thundered that into the back of the net. The FA Cup fourth round. Listen on sounds, watch on BBC iPlayer. This is Five Live Sports with Steve Crossman. On Five Live, listen on BBC Sounds. And we are live at Craven Cottage where Fulham trail Liverpool by a goal to nil at half-time in the semi-final second leg. They are 3-1 down on aggregate. Chelsea, of course, await in the final at Wembley Stadium. Let's dip back into the Championship. We're underway in the second half now at Ellen Road. Leeds, Norwich, Betty Glover. Yeah, Leeds still leading Norwich 1-0. Patrick Bamford's header in the first half was the difference. Leeds well on top so far in this second half. Some nice play of Anthony pulling the ball back to meet Somerville in the area who fired it over the bar. Leeds 1, Norwich 0. Uh, applause in the background for uh, Richard Money here, represented both clubs, European Cup winner with Liverpool, uh, but a, a Fulham hero as well, part of that Fulham side in the 1970s who went all the way, got to an FA Cup final in 1975. Uh, Richard Money, who's been uh, here on the pitch tonight at Craven Cottage. Uh, live Scottish football going on tonight. Hibs Rangers, Amy Barber. And two first half goals have given Rangers the lead here heading into the second half, which has allowed Philip Clement to make a few changes at the break. Rid Van Yelma has got the first, Todd Cantwell got the second. He is one of the players who've gone off, uh, as has Nico Raskin, Tom Lawrence and Dujan Sterling coming on. But the best chance of the second half fell to Hibs. Eli Yuan, brilliant down the right-hand side, cut it back to find the debutant Midian Maolida, but his effort superbly saved by Jack Butland. It is still Hibernian nil, Rangers 2. Thank you very much, Ailey. England's first test against India starts at 4am tomorrow morning in Hyderabad. Updates on Five Live throughout the five test series. They picked three specialist spinners, including a debut for Lancashire's Tom Hartley. Let's speak to the former England batter and batting coach, Mark Ramprakash. Uh, Mark, good evening. A very good evening. So um, let, let's go in with this. One, one pace bowler, three spinners. And I suppose a lot of people yeah. might question that. But ultimately, if they've got in with a load of pace bowlers there's the danger that they could have got absolutely thumped, isn't there? Yes, absolutely. I remember in 1992, England just did that and on a very dry wicket in Calcutta and they paid the price. This time, uh, from all reports, the wicket's very dry, bare at both ends. It's clearly going to aid spin bowling as the match goes on. And it would seem a very obvious selection. The only issue is, of course, is that England have selected these very young, inexperienced spinners. It's going to be fascinating to see how they go in these conditions and you contrast that with the vastly experienced opposition India having three of the best spinners in the world there's making your debut Mark and then there is making <laughs> your debut in a test series in India what a cocktail <laughs> yes yes absolutely and Tom Hartley uh, he's going to be doing that but I think that the England camp you know all the noises are that they've created this in the last two years this atmosphere that under Ben Stokes captaincy they really encourage, they welcome the young players and they really encourage them to go out and enjoy themselves. Um, one of the young spinners in Rehan Ahmed, he did that last winter. He took a test match five wicket haul against Pakistan. He's in the side. Um, he's sort of a bubbly type character that seems to enjoy the big occasion. And Hartley, well, you know, he bowls his orthodox left arm spin and it should be on a wicket that may aid that type of bowling. But he'll be up against some very talented and experienced Indian batsmen. And I, and I think a lot will depend on Stokes' captaincy and when he brings him on and perhaps when he gives him a bit of protection. Uh, stay with us, Mark. We're just going to hear about a goal in the Manchester derby in the Women's League Cup. Sani. Manchester United have halved the deficit. Nikita Paris sliding in. There are three minutes to go. It's Manchester City 2, Manchester United 1. Thank you, Sani. Um, the other question here, Mark, I suppose, is you, you go with one quick and, and I can see why that makes sense. On the other side of that coin, when that one quick is Mark Wood, I've spoken to him before about how he manages his body and it has been really difficult for him. So I suppose that is one criticism that might be aimed is if you're going to have one quick, do you want it to be somebody who hasn't necessarily found it that easy to keep himself fit? Yep, that, that is a really valid point, and I'm sure the England camp will have asked themselves, they would have thought long and hard about it. Um, the other fella, I mean, if they had picked the other quickest bowler in the squad, it would have been Gus Atkinson, and he's very inexperienced. Of course, Jimmy Anderson's there, but he doesn't possess the same pace as Mark would. I think the England camp think that 
you know, look, pace bowling is not going to bowl many overs in these conditions. It's hot, dry. Um, they think Mark Wood might be able to reverse swing the ball as it gets older. But they're really looking for the spinners to do the bulk of the work. Jack Leach back in the side after a stress fracture. A lot depends on him. He's really experienced and they need him to, to fire and bowl when the pressure's on. And then they've got to mix around these, these other two young spinners in Rehan Ahmed, uh, Tom Hartley. And of course, I mean, Joe Root may come into the equation as, uh, as well. Great stuff, Mark. Really appreciate you coming on. That is Mark Ramprakash, of course, England legend as a batter, England batting coach previously as well. We are here at Craven Cottage where uh, the noise has just gone up. A little notch London calling playing in the background. Well, it is for one of these two. And at the moment, it looks like it's going to be Liverpool back here in the capital for a League Cup final at Wembley Stadium. They have a two-goal aggregate advantage over Fulham, who did create opportunities in the first half, but it is still at the moment that one error from the Fulham goalkeeper, Bernd Leno, who's just strolled out away to our left-hand side, uh, which separates the sides on the night. Fulham are capable. They came back famously against Hamburg all those years ago. More pertinently, more recently, they turned an Arsenal deficit into a Premier League victory. Second half commentary here then live on Five Live with Chris Sutton and correspondent John Murray. Well, hundreds of black and white flags are flying, but I would say not quite with the same gusto as they were before the start of the match. I don't see any changes. The, uh, the last of the Fulham coaching staff are just reaching the, the dugouts on the far side in the Riverside stand. So Fulham as they started with Leno in goal, caught out for the only goal of the match so far. Castagna, Adarabayo, Diop and Robinson, the back four. Palina and Kearney as Fulham get the second half underway. And Pereira, the uh, the other midfielder. Decode over Reed on the right, William on the left. Jimenez through the middle. And uh, Liverpool, as they started with Kelleher in goal. Bradley, Kwanzaa, Van Dijk and Gomez. Canate is among the substitutes tonight. As Liverpool win it back in centre field. And Gravenberg plays it through in the space here for Diaz into the box on the left, cuts it back on his right foot, plays it across, and he plays it behind the arriving Gakpo. And the chance might have gone. Gakpo back to the edge of the area. Elliott's low shot right across the edge of the area, sliced it actually outside of his left foot. And all the way through a crowd of players for a goal kick. Uh, Chris Sutton in a moment, just to complete the Liverpool lineup. McAllister with Elliott and Gravenberg in midfield, and then uh, Gakpo, Nunez and Diaz and yes Chris Sutton Premier League winner Premier League Golden Boot winner is with us here inside Craven Cottage yeah and Gravenberg just popped the ball out to uh, to Diaz and as he chops in on his right foot we're right behind this John aren't we you're thinking just shoot it created a lovely little angle elected to pass and the chance went begging wasn't on wasn't accurate enough with the pass there were Fulham fans unhappy because Nunez was in an offside position but Diaz ran from deep and that was a chance to really put this tie to bed. As it is, Fulham nil, Liverpool 1. So 3-1 Liverpool lead on aggregate. And Fulham have somehow got to, to draw it level just to take it into extra time. A crowd tonight inside Craven Cottage. That's what you're hearing now. It's the Liverpool fans, actually 3,000 of them. But in total, 24,320 are inside the ground tonight for what is Craven Cottage's first semi-final since 2010 when they came back so memorably against Hamburg to get to Hamburg in the Europa League final under Roy Hodgson one of only two major finals that uh, Fulham have been in major cup finals throw in to Liverpool Gravenberg plays it up to Elliot Kearney headed it won it forward ahead to the halfway line and then Jimenez plays it forward but straight into the path of Gomez and Gomez will now run it out towards the left-hand side uh, but Diaz cuts back into his own half and plays it back to Van Dijk so let's get the full-time news on our featured match in the Women's League Cup tonight the Manchester derby from Sani Radravadjala and it's Manchester City who are through to the quarterfinals they've beaten Manchester United by two goals to one Chloe Kelly composed finish uh, for the first one but set up by Lauren Hemp who got it on the app with the second and Nikita Paris halved the deficit with five minutes into injury time United now will have to wait and see if they're one of the best place second place sides it's finished Manchester City two Manchester United one and in the 
7.45 kickoff still Hibernian nil Rangers 2 St Johnston nil Aberdeen nil Gravenberg bringing it forward for Liverpool but Palinia puts in the challenge and Palinia goes through a couple of challenges then beats Nunez and then a right footed ball is beyond Jimenez and will bounce harmlessly out of play actually into the arms of Jurgen Klopp who uh, the ball looked like a marble in his hands over there Jurgen Klopp and he's waiting for Bradley to come and get it still leads one Norwich nil in the uh, in the championship Patrick Bamford's goal uh, in the 8 o'clock kickoff. this is on Sports Extra Chelsea nil, Real Madrid nil, and Aberdeen have taken the lead at St Johnston bringing news of the scorer in a moment but it is St Johnston nil, Aberdeen 1 and it is Miofsky who has scored it here is Darwin Nunez left corner of the penalty area takes on Adarabayo just put his arm on his shoulder which meant that Nunez had to cut back Gomez goes for goal with his right foot but it was always over the top by a couple of yards Chris Sutton not yet Joe not yet not yet not far away Joe 25 yards out trying to bend the ball into that far top corner when he, when he scores this season you will think instantly of me I often do anyway John <laughs> just in, well, just likewise, in life likewise Fulham nil, Liverpool one, as uh, the ball is lumped forward with his right foot by Kwanzaa, headed away by Castagna, and then forward from Robinson, bounces back into the Fulham defence. You know, this could be, who knows, you know, all of us sitting here are thinking Liverpool are going to get through here, but Fulham have not given this up. William cutting infield, right footed ball, De Cordova Reed now right side of the box, shoots, took a double deflection, back to De Cordova Reed. And then Diaz back in his own penalty area puts it behind corner to Fulham. Who gets the block on though? Joe Gomez read the situation brilliantly. The ball is, is switched. Fulham play really quickly and well through the midfield. Ball switched out right to Decordova Reed, who shifts the ball, tries to create a, an angle, but Gomez on hand to block it. Fulham searching for the equaliser on the night. Pereira with the corner, it's a deep one. Van Dijk, I think, just got a glancing header on that in amongst the crowd of players. Here's William, the man who opened the scoring in this tie. William shoots from distance, blocked on the edge of the area, and Liverpool could be off on the counter-attack because Diaz got there first, ahead of Kearney, and Robinson has to get there for Fulham, but he does against Darwin Nunez. That was a good race between the two of them, and, and Robinson won it. And Fulham should clear through Leno, who does put his foot through it and launch it high, almost above the the roof above our heads of the Johnny Haynes stand now here's Diaz Luis Diaz the goal scorer into the penalty area goes for the byline cuts it across and it's stabbed goalwards by Gakpo but wide it was an awkward height and he could only stab it wide at the top left corner he's so clever Diaz as he receives the ball Castagna thinks he wants to go on the inside as he did do when he scored in the first half but he drove the outside I think Castagna to his credit actually got something on the cross and Gakpo made that near post run but didn't get the desired contact for a Fulham goal kick I was going to say Chris what you know the general expectation being that Liverpool will now see this through and reach yet another final but Fulham coming forward and now Jimenez plays it across headed away by Gomez he might have let that go but he didn't risk it decoded over Reed the Castagna a muddy smudge on the back of his white Fulham shirt, the number 21, back it goes to the halfway line, to Adarabayo, now Diop passing it forward, bounces off Robinson, but Fulham, William, uh, an economical little pass in field towards Kearney, and now William again, but McAllister was in on him, the ball bounces out for a throw-in on the far side, but although there's a Fulham it, man who's gone down, kick? I think it is, yeah. challenge on Kearney. But better from Fulham, actually, Thought in this second half they need to be brave to get back into this game and they've had a couple of encouraging attacks and actually kept the ball in the Liverpool half for a few moments which is something that quite simply they didn't do in the first half point I was going to make you know I always and often whenever I'm thinking of you actually Chris think back to when we were in Amsterdam together you know at that, that Champions League semi-final where it looked over we <laughs> had written it off we'd all written it off and what happened? Tottenham came back and won. William, right-footed ball, across, and goalkeeper comes, Galea, bounces down, shot from Pereira, that's 
blocked inside the penalty area and it breaks away and Liverpool are off on the counter-attack here it's three against two Darwin Nunez cuts in field Nunez plays it square to Elliot and Elliot shoots into the legs of Leno straight at the keeper and the Fulham goalkeeper kept out the former Fulham youngster well I think Nunez picked the wrong pass shot now across the face of goal from McAllister the drag well wide goal kick yeah, I thought Nunez he should have picked out Diaz who's made a really clever run but got to say Kelleher makes a real mess of the cross mistimes it Diop gets up and Pereira it is against the post Cannon's off the post it's, it's at, at an angle He's, he feels he should score that that's a that's a gilt edged opportunity. I'm not saying it's an easy, easy opportunity, but from that angle of player at this level, got to be scoring that in front of the Hammersmith end. The angle was tight, but it was there. The opportunity was there. How many yards away was he on the far side of the six-yard box? Probably, I don't know, five, six yards. Yeah, probably what sort of it. A yard and a half, two yards in from the touchline. And, and how much of a gap been, did he have to he shoot? He had for? enough of a gap. Enough of a gap. He'll be thinking about that one this that, evening. That's a massive moment. And that really takes me back to the first leg at Anfield where D. Cordova Reed had the opportunity and chose. You know, he was in two minds, not taken, and that one there, Pereira puts that in the net there and brings it back to 1-1 on the night, and that actually just illustrates where we are in this tie. Yeah. Fulham yeah. score, then it, it'll have a yeah. very, yeah. very different feel. Absolutely, and Kelleher making an error with the cross ball. They haven't put him under enough pressure this evening. Allison's on the bench. Fulham, Jimenez plays it forward, just helps it across the, the pitch, and did Gomez get a touch on that? As Castagna was challenging, no he didn't, as uh, Pereira was challenging, no he didn't, it's a goal kick to Liverpool. And the score is Fulham nil, Liverpool 1, so on aggregate it is Fulham 1, Liverpool 3. So in order to take this to extra time, Fulham would have to score twice without reply. And there, are, there is no away goals rule in operation, so uh, were that to be the case, then it would be extra time. And then, Were you a fan of the away goals? I was a big fan, actually. A big fan. Reason being that I, I felt it was another way for matches not to go to penalties. And I think that's a, I think that's a better way of deciding matches. I think a lot of people are with you, actually. Good. Well, popular view. Maybe, maybe we should, man, maybe man, we should a, turn back time. I'm a man of the people. Here's Gomez in field to... Uh, Kwanzaa and then uh, the ball runs away out of play for a throw in to Fulham on the Liverpool lead what it is with Pereira striking the post a little warning sign to Liverpool in that you haven't won this just yet still got work to do Fulham being a lot braver in this second half they had to be yeah Jurgen Klopp pulled his snood right up over his face when Pereira hit the post and I think that that little image there told you Exactly what you're saying, Chris, that this job is not done yet for Liverpool as the ball bounces out for a throw-in to the visitors, the record winners of this competition, nine times winners of the League Cup. This is a, a record-extending 19th appearance in the semi-final of this competition alone. Throw-in that Liverpool are taking time to take and the Fulham fans over there in the bottom section of the Riverside stand are onto. Connor Bradley eventually takes the throw. Fulham in the white shirts with the black sleeves. William with all of that hair on the far side. Plays it infield, the 35-year-old. Back now to the halfway line. Castagna pulls away to the right and receives the ball. Castagna goes for an early ball across the edge of the box, but that was blocked by Gravenberg on the edge of his own penalty area. Gravenberg then steps in again. Oh, Diaz. Diaz played it away from Polina, who slid in and, and could have brought him down, but Diaz kept his feet, and Diaz is running away with the ball now. Gives it to his left to Darwin Nunez, who curls it. Good save by Leno. Leaping to his left, I think that was going in, and Leno's dive and save kept it out. That is a brilliant save from Leno. It really is. First of all, what a bit of play from Diaz. Polina dives in, just pokes the ball over him, drives forward, pops it out to Nunez on the left-hand side, who with that right foot always going to try and feed it, bend it into that far corner, starts it off outside the left-hand post of 
Leno and Leno gets a fingertip. Crucial save. We had a we had a great view of that, didn't we? I don't think you could have had a better view of that save than the angle that we had. We are right behind it. Corner for Liverpool, outswinger to the near post. That's headed up and away by the, the blonde dyed hair of Anthony Robinson, the American international. Robinson, who's been said to be interesting Liverpool. Robinson uh, puts in a challenge, tackles back well. I think he might have been fouled. No, he wasn't. McAllister comes out with the ball, pulls it back. It's deflected, actually, back out of the penalty area to William, and William couldn't find the pass forward. And now cross from Gravenberg, but Adarabayo is there in the edge of the six-yard box. William, it was a half-hearted challenge from him, and Liverpool have got it again. And it comes across to Diaz, edge of the area, thought about it. Then they played the ball in. Gakpo pulls it across, header down by Kwanzaa and Diaz does well wins it back I mean the hunger from Diaz there against Pereira terrific and again Diaz back to Elliot on the left hand side little Elliot number 19 being chased by Decord over Reed and wins wins the throw in for Liverpool just down to our left Fulham nil Liverpool 1 remains the score on the night and I think there's been a first goal of the tie in the Champions League at Stamford Bridge the Women's Champions League Becky Ives it has Chelsea 1 Real Madrid 0 it's a Guru Rice and penalty converted after the hour Neve Charles ran in the box forced the foul from the Real Madrid defence a low into the bottom right hand corner powerful shot means Chelsea are 1-0 up and a third goal of the night at Easter Road Ailey Barber and a third goal for Rangers this one Cyril Desser squeezing it past David Marshall he's been on the pitch for mere moments but the striker who had lost his place uh, to Fabio Silva tonight he's come off the bench and he's got himself on the score sheet and it's given Rangers a very comfortable lead and it's Hibernian nil Rangers three yes nice one surreal St Johnston nil Aberdeen one Van Dijk playing the ball away from the edge of his own penalty area but Adarabayo clears it and as he does so just holds his hip Puts it out of play for a throw on the halfway line. It was his, his glute. His glute, his buttock. Yeah. As uh, Diaz is fouled. He's been excellent, hasn't he? What a bundle of energy he is, that the little Colombian. Yeah, I don't think he's so, so little. Can take a hit, Wait, can't my, he? My I mean, just, just with the Polina challenge, got up, got on with it. Yeah, he's, he's tough. And what a seat, you know, when you think of the whole thing about his parents kidnapped. And that was amazing, wasn't it? That night when he played for Colombia and his dad was there, first match after he'd, he'd escaped or been released, and, and Diaz scores two goals and they beat Brazil in a World Cup qualifier for the first time. It's almost like... Yeah. I, mean, it's, I mean, it's Hollywood, that, isn't it? Written in the stars, some things. Here's Gakpo on the right-hand side. Well, what's written in the stars for Fulham here? They're on the back foot, oh. Gakpo, Gravenberg, and uh, Diop stood up tall, flick from Pereira, might bounce for Kearney, it does, but uh, in comes the challenge from Bradley, and now Elliot's onto this, Elliot across to Diaz, edge of the D, nice footwork, but uh, wanted too long on the ball, but keeps it as well. Again, great persistence once again from Diaz, now here's Darwin Nunez on the left-hand side, he came close to that second Liverpool goal not too long ago, and now McAllister is being challenged by Jimenez, and... Uh, and, and the referee gives that as a free kick to Fulham. Well, McAllister was tangling with Jimenez and Kearney got involved and somehow Fulham got the free kick. Yeah, just last few minutes, Liverpool have wrestled back control. McAllister has wrestled out of that one by Kearney. The tag team there, Kearney and Jimenez, but foul went the other way. Yeah. 1-0 Liverpool lead, 5 live from the BBC. On air till 10.30 tonight, before Gordon Smart with his new programme. Every weekday and night, Liverpool coming forward, Elliot to Darwin Nunez. Nunez trying to find a way through into the penalty area, Elliot's onto this, but the referee has spotted an infringement, and it's another free kick to Fulham. We're back down to the story of the, the first half right now, in that Fulham are trying to play their way out, and Liverpool are just smothering them, suffocating them, winning the ball back in the Fulham half. And it's wave after wave. But Fulham have to persist. They have to keep being brave. The prize is massive for Fulham. You know, when are they, when's Fulham, when are Fulham going to have another chance like this? You wonder. The first semi-final for nearly 14 years. The club's never won a major trophy. The league title, the FA Cup, the League Cup, never won it. And here they are, 
They're behind, they're up against it, and now they've lost the ball on the edge of their own penalty area, and Nunez turns and shoots across the face of goal and wide of the far post. And I have to say, from the angle, and he was shooting from the far side of the penalty area, I was half expecting to see that fly into the top corner. Well, Leno went for it, didn't he? It's a brilliant quick swivel from Nunez. Oh, yeah, you're quite right on the far side of the box and whipped in a shot, and Leno threw himself at the ball and it went wide of the far post. Liverpool come again. The moment the, I'm sitting here wondering, is, is another goal going to come in this in this tie? And if there is. If it's Fulham, the, the complexion will totally change. And as I say, that great prize. Surprisingly, there are five current Premier League teams who've not won one of the major trophies. Gomez Kay, carrying the ball through the middle, but Kearney was able to step in and then Pereira wins the throw in. I think that's Gomez's maybe first mistake this evening playing in that. Say Trent Alexander Arnold role, inverted role in midfield turning and driving with the ball caught out by Polina Fulham with the ball in their own defensive third, Robinson over there on the far side playing it forward but that's intercepted easily by Bradley and the right back carries it on but oh, a heavy touch Polina was in with a challenge and that challenge takes the ball back to McAllister with the black gloves on, on what is a relatively mild night here by the, the River Thames, very calm next to the river this evening as I walk through Bishop's Park, back it comes to Dia, uh, Van Dyke in the centre circle, Van Dyke to Gomez, the bearded Gomez to his left, and then Van Dyke just takes a touch, just taking a sting out of this. I mean, the players will be thinking the same as I've just said. You know, Liverpool players here with this lead, one nil. The one thing they do not want to do is to concede a goal because uh, of what that would do. As the ball is played down offside. the right hand side, but Gakpo's in an offside position. No VAR, so the assistant could put the flag up. Yeah, it's a case from Liverpool's perspective. Do not give Fulham any encouragement. I think both teams, looking at the benches, both teams are going to make substitutions. Fulham have lacked a bit of a spark, haven't they? Yeah, Jota and Jones coming on for Liverpool, so double change for Liverpool. I think that was Harry Wilson who's getting ready, the former Liverpool youngster. Uh, St Johnson have equalised at McDermott Park. Uh, Keltians with the equaliser, St Johnston 1, Aberdeen 1. Rangers still 3-0 up. And uh, back to Stamford Bridge, Becky Ives. Because Real Madrid have an equaliser against the runner player, has to say. Substitute Athenia. She was actually quickest to a shot that Hannah Hampton had originally saved and pushed out. But it means they're back on level terms. Chelsea 1, Real Madrid 1. And uh, in the... Cup of Nations, the Africa Cup, Tanzania nil, DR Congo nil, and Zambia nil, Morocco won as Pereira overhits a pass through the inside right position and through for a goal kick. And, and those score lines mean that uh, Ivory Coast would be qualifying as one of the third place teams. Right, we're going to see the uh, first of the changes now. So Decode over Reed is going to be replaced by that is Harry Wilson coming on, isn't it? Yep, yep. It is. Uh, the number eight, former Liverpool youngster. The Welsh international. And he is going to take up a position on the right-hand side. And Liverpool's changes. Uh, McAllister coming off. He did get a knock in the first half. So Curtis Jones coming on. Big relief for Liverpool to hear that, that uh, it, it was not a hamstring injury that forced him off at Bournemouth on Sunday. So he's off. Darwin Nunez is also leaving the field, came so close to adding to his tally about 10 minutes ago. And, and Diogo Jota, who himself scored two goals at Bournemouth on Sunday, comes on when we know what he can offer, so Jota and Jones. So we you know, talk about the Liverpool injury list and still got quite a bench, haven't they? Uh, back to Chelsea, Becky Ives. They have hit back almost instantly. Chelsea 2, Real Madrid 1, Erin Cuthbert. She took the initial shot on. Chava saved it in the Real Madrid net, but she pushed it into her own net. She's not going to want to watch that back later. Chelsea 2, Real Madrid 1. 
and that is on Sports Extra, the commentary on Sports Extra. Uh, FA Cup commentary start the fourth round tomorrow night uh, on Five Live Sports Extra. So the uh, the live football tomorrow night on Sports Extra on your digital radio via BBC Sounds, starting off with Bournemouth against Swansea, but then a big night on Friday. Tottenham, Manchester City on Five Live. Chelsea, Aston Villa on Sports Extra. We'll have all of the, the, the Friday night matches covered. And then uh, they carry on Saturday, Sunday. Ipswich, Maidstone is the, is the 12.30 kick off the, the commentary match. Five Live, the place to hear that, when Terry Butcher will be part of the Five Live commentary team, the former England captain, former Liverpool, uh, former Ipswich. Great, really, you would call Terry. Here is Diaz, up to the edge of the area. Elliot, still 1-0 on the night. Liverpool still on course for Wembley in the final again. Jota, now into the action for the first time, but loses out, and Palinha dispossessed him and then was tugged back not a great deal in that but it's a free kick to Fulham Chris Sutton yeah it looks like just seeing where Jota's setting up I think he's, they're, they're pretty fluid Gakpo was playing as a centre forward now he's gone out to the right and Jota's a different type of striker than Nunez I think we'll see him drop a little bit deeper at times and get on the ball and link things up such a clever footballer I'm going to ask you about Curtis Jones, John, mm-hmm. and possibility of him going to the Euros. Yeah, that's certainly being Gareth. mentioned. Certainly being mentioned as a possibility. And uh, Palina, lovely ball over the top. Wilson stretching, got a touch on that, but couldn't bring it down. He was at full stretch, at pace, and he couldn't bring it down. It just bounced through for a goal kick to Liverpool. I think for, for Curtis Jones, uh, I think uh, if you're in a team that is at the top of the Premier League and you're playing regularly in that midfield and you're chasing success on four fronts and and also you've been involved in an England under-21 winning team at the end of last season, which he was in the European Championship, then certainly you would think that he might get a go in the March games. Here's Diaz, does well against Castagna. Diaz plays it across to the edge of the penalty area. Uh, Gakpo deflected across, but deflected for Fulham, where Polina under pressure could only clear it so far. Graven back shoots wide of the foot of the left post from just outside the D. Again, Liverpool close to a second. Yes, yeah, set up beautifully. Graven Burke controls the ball at 20 yards out and just sits there waiting to be laced he just pulls it a little bit doesn't get it quite with his laces and scuffs it wide of Leno's right hand post what do you think Jones in England? Uh, yeah I, I'm sort of with you I, I, I don't quite get the Calvin Phillips thing at the moment I mean he's, he's well he's now going to stop playing yeah. regularly well West Ham and he'll go there but it, you know his form has to be good because it's good to see someone like Jones actually pushing there's a little coming together Jota Jota yeah and uh, Diop Diop yeah well, well Jota is, is looking is looking up at him yeah I know my money would be on Diop towering over him and uh, referee Hooper just as a word no more than and the two of them actually just then touch hands and arms oh, again as they run away together and, and that's ridiculous Diop's actually put his hands up to him and uh, honestly honestly Chris footballers I think yeah a little bit petty never understand petty people (laughs) 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 Fulham nil Liverpool won they're still going of course they are of course they are He's like a little Ali Bruce Ball, Jota is. Diop tickles him under the arm. This is like, this is like myself and Bruce in it Russia. Is, this is. is. Yeah. Well, we'll keep an eye on that. Actually, a bit of comedy, really. Fulham nil, Liverpool one, and uh, we're into the final quarter of the second leg. Now it's going to happen. It's going to have to happen soon for Fulham. They've got to find two goals without reply to take this to extra time. William on the left-hand side. William, what can he do with that little footwork? A League Cup winner in his time with Chelsea against Maurizio Pochettino's Tottenham, strangely enough, who will now be in the final with Chelsea. It's funny how things go, isn't it? Here's Adorabayo up towards the edge of the penalty area to Jimenez. And now lifted out to the right by Polinia. Castagna gets that down with his chest and then drives it across via a couple of deflections. It's gone all the way to Polina. Deflection across the goal, but it took the pace off it from Jimenez. 
and Keller has scampering to his left across the six yard box was able to fall on yeah, Castagna wasn't a great cross in fact as deflected to Polinio edge of the box who didn't get a clean contact on it eventually deflected to Kelleher but from Fulham's perspective it's only one moment to turn this game Liverpool have been the comeback kings this season yeah. and Fulham somehow manage to get that moment that spark and turn this game around yeah. eight times this season Liverpool have come from behind to win matches just thinking of Jimenez there, who we talked a lot about him before the game. I think he's had one opportunity so far in this match, the, the shot in the first half that was saved by uh, by Kelleher. Fulham need to get him into the game. Liverpool in possession, though, inside the Fulham half as they attack towards the end where their own supporters are. Castagna gets up, heads it infield. Gomez into possession. Now Jones... Jones, who is, is playing as a deeper midfielder, and that's the other thing about him, he can play as a more advanced player. As uh, Gomez overruns that, and Polina steps in on him, and, and actually, had he not been so rash there, Polina, Fulham might have been away, but he's conceded the free kick. So, free kick to Liverpool. They're not going to be in, in any hurry. Uh, so, we can go back to Edinburgh and Ailey Barber. Where Rangers thought that they had a fourth of the evening. Brilliant work from two substitutes, Ryan Jack down the right hand side, who found uh, Tom Lawrence in the centre of the box. First time effort past David Marshall, offside flag went up. Var checked, goal disallowed. So it is still Hibernian nil, Rangers three. Still St Johnston one, Aberdeen one. Still Leeds one, Norwich nil, by the way. Leeds leading through the Bamford goal. Gomez playing a ball in from the angle, but Robinson watched that and allowed it to bounce through in front of him for a goal kick. Fulham nil, Liverpool one. Uh, by the way, I must mention, premiering tonight on BBC One, um, new programme, it's on BBC Television, on BBC One, it's on the iPlayer as well. Uh, there's an accompanying podcast series which is called Pep Guardiola Chasing Perfection. Four-part podcast series to accompany the TV documentary, so you can watch it on iPlayer, listen to it on sound. Here is Wilson on the right-hand side. Wilson carrying the ball down the right. And uh, Jimenez knocking the ball back towards the halfway line to Castagna. Well, we've got 15 minutes to go. Fulham have got to come up with two goals without reply to take this to extra time. William on the left-hand side. Liverpool players all around him. William plays it back to Robinson. William again. Williams ball in. Flick from Wilson. Robinson forward again for Fulham. Kenny's there, change of feet from him. But Fulham with the ball on the left-hand side, making no inroads against Liverpool. And then Gak Gakpo actually probably gives them a helping hand by fouling Kenny and conceding a free kick on the left. And a really decent passage of play from Fulham. Sharp, incisive passing. But Liverpool defensively, how hard they're working. Clumsy challenge in the end. Can Fulham make something of this? Andrew Abayo's gone forward, so is Diop. Well, Marco Silva is going to bring on his, his young Brazilian striker, Rodrigo Muniz, who was on loan at Middlesbrough last season. He scored just one goal this season, but... Free kick, first of all, though. Kearney playing it in, left-footed, which is headed away to the edge of the box. William plays it back in there. And uh, Diop goes down as several players challenge for the ball on the edge of the area, but... Shouts from the crowd, but nothing from the players. Again, Wilson on the left-hand side as he comes forward. He beats Bradley. Wilson plays it across to Flexen. And... Fulham have scored! And Diop got the touch. The big man from the back. Enough to force it past Callagher. And Fulham are on the score sheet in the semi-final here at Craven Cottage. 1-1 on the night now. Liverpool lead 3-2 on aggregate and we've got 14 minutes of the 90 to play yep, one moment and this stadium has come alive got to say Harry Wilson what a bit of play on the left hand side chops inside Bradley feeds the ball over and Diop what's he doing forward bundles the ball in four or five yards past Kelleher it's a really clever finish just opens his right foot out or his right knee out I should say and just deflects it past Kelleher Ext instinctive finish Fulham back in it Cross took a little deflection when Wilson played it over and that carried it onto just above Diop's right knee and it flew into the net now Fulham have got their tails up 
They need another goal. They need one more goal without reply to take this to extra time. And they've got time. 13 minutes to go. William goes down. They wanted a free kick. Referee Hooper's having none of that. Liverpool break away. Suddenly the mood has changed, as predicted. And now Jota, though. Jota sets off goal, but Polina can't catch him. And then uh, Diop in on the challenge. That was heavy. He caught Jota. It's a free kick. And uh, Diop, moments after scoring, now gets a yellow card. Yeah. He eventually brought Jota down. Polina had an attempted, can only be described as a rugby tackle, to bring him down. Jota just overrunning the ball. And Diop clattering into him but this stadium now they believe these Fulham fans that one goal changed the momentum not one of the great finishes but it was great oh, for Fulham it was, great. It, was, it was a great a brilliantly need oh, it was just a me, wasn't it yeah. you ever score, with, ever, ever score with that part of your body Chris <laughs> most of mine were off my shin John <laughs> you're too modest Free kick for Liverpool. So it is 1-1 on the night, 3-2 to Liverpool on aggregate. Five live and BBC Sounds, live from Craven Cottage, with the floodlights shining down on Elliot, who clips this in. Van Dijk heads it across the edge of the six-yard box. That's headed away by Wilson. Comes out to the red of Liverpool. Elliot chests it down and shoots, but pulls it wide. Pulls it well wide. And they're all waving their clappers at Harvey Elliott, the former Fulham youngster. William now skips away from the challenge and now here's Wilson against his former club Wilson left foot shot oh Kelleher goes down oh, oh that could easily have gone in that was not a convincing save but a save it was and he shoveled it around the post um, Wilson's been the difference maker hasn't he off that right hand side inside on his favoured left foot and Kelleher gets so lucky a bounce is just in front of him down to his right hand side somehow goes around the post he was fortunate there, very fortunate, the Irishman. Corner then, Fulham, they are dreaming now. Well, they're believing. Pereira plays it into the near post, but headed up and away by Gravenberg. Hasn't cleared the penalty area, comes out to William, who cleverly just turns it back to Pereira. Pereira wants it onto his right foot to whip it in. Cleared away by Kwanzaa. And Liverpool, Liverpool are being tested here now. Liverpool are on course for the final, but things could change yet. Don't rule out extra time. William, Fulham need to score one more without conceding. Uh, challenge on Wilson on the far side, no free kick. Polina plays it to Jimenez, edge of the area, chests it down. Strong centre forward play from the Mexican, still going inside the box, bounces away from him though, and Liverpool can clear it away on the edge of the box, out for a throw. Full time at Easter Road, Ailey Barber. A comfortable return to lead business for Rangers. They put together some lovely fluid moments, but it was just a little bit too easy for them, really, here at Easter Road. Rit van Yilmaz's first Premiership goal got things going before a Todd Cantwell stunner had it all done, but at the break, Cyril Dessers added a third with his first involvement from the bench. Hips had moments, but they didn't really make Rangers work too hard for it. Discontent growing amongst the Hips fans. They left well before the end of this one. Rangers close the gap on leader Celtic to five points with a game still in hand. And it finished, Tavernia nil, Rangers 3. Still playing St Johnston 1, Aberdeen 1. And uh, Fulham hit a long ball forward. Callaghan under pressure, was able to catch it inside of the penalty area. But the mood now, in the last 10 minutes of the second leg of this Carabao Cup semi-final, are rather like it was in the first 10 minutes. And no, oh, Adarabayo goes into the challenge but comes out with the ball, went through the challenge, and it comes back to him. Plays it, lifts it out to William on the left-hand side. He's up against Elliot. William, right-footed ball, into the near post. Wilson's after that as well. Van Dijk gets there first. Cleared, cleared away, but not by a distance. So Fulham are able to force it back to the edge of the area. Castagna. And now it finds its way to the right-hand side, where it's whipped right across from the right-hand side. All the way out towards the left hand, and then Elliot is able to win it back from William and Bradley will clip it away and Liverpool will bring it forward. But Fulham, as they have to, are fighting for everything. And Paulinho slides in to block this one out for a throw in near the halfway line. Yeah, but since the goal, there's a inevitability about it. We're seeing a fast and furious Fulham now pushing Liverpool back. And Liverpool at the back, first time this evening, they've started to look 
a bit uncomfortable. Well, they're going to bring on Kenny Tete, so a change at right back. Tete, the uh, the Dutch international, replaces Castagna, so that is a straight swap. And uh, Muniz is coming on as well to replace. Who's gone off on the far side? It's not entirely clear who came off, but certainly uh, Kenny Tete was on. Pereira? Pereira, yeah. yeah. So Tete on for Castagna and Reed. And Harrison Reed has come on for Kenny. And we also see a Liverpool change here. And uh, Canate is coming on, the central defender, and that's Gakpo coming off. So I think that tells you all you need to know. And uh, another Liverpool change as well. Sees Bobby Clark, the young midfielder, son of Lee Clark. Who I guess you'll have played against, Chris. Yeah, good player. Bobby Clark coming on for another appearance, only his fifth senior Liverpool appearance into the midfield for Gravenberg. Well, what an opportunity that is to see see the team through to a final for Bobby Clark. So the number 42 coming on for Liverpool. So Rodrigo Muniz. Has, uh, has taken up a position up front. The, uh, the number 19 is uh, he's up there alongside Jimenez. Fulham have got a, a free kick on the edge of their own penalty area, but Wilson on the right, William on the left, and Muniz and Jimenez through the middle. It has finished St Johnston 1, Aberdeen 1, still playing, leads 1 0 up against Norwich. And uh, Liverpool three centre halves, of course. Yeah, now. three at the back. Well, that that does tell you the pressure that Fulham are putting on Liverpool. Jurgen Klopp's made that move, and uh, Wilson with a misplaced pass forward. Liverpool have got it back, looking for the goal that would finish it off. Clark through the middle for Liverpool, and uh, William is able to to win it from him. It's real hurly burly now on the halfway line, and then Wilson slides in on the challenge. That's good on Jota. That's the spirit from Fulham. But time running out, just over five minutes of the 90 to play. And Fulham have to score one more without reply to take this to extra time. Chelsea, Maurizio Pochettino sitting watching very comfortably. And at the moment, it would be Liverpool-Chelsea, just like the two finals of the season before last. The two nil-nils won on penalties. But Fulham with... Adarabayo, long right-footed ball forward onto the head of Van Dijk, Wilson, who certainly helped things, helped to create the goal for Diop, the equaliser on the night. And then in with the challenge, Adarabayo, the ball stayed in for Diaz, Diaz trying to go round the right-hand side, uh, the left-hand side with Tete, who goes to ground and slides it out for a throwing down the left flank. And Liverpool will not be in any rush to take this. A bit of respite now for Liverpool, where so they want to be. Deep in the Fulham half. Throw in, and the ball is uh, accidentally on purpose run away from Gomez, who doesn't exactly sprint after it. Four minutes to go, four minutes to go, and, uh, and, and, the, and the Fulham fans are on their feet. You can hear the reaction, throw in taken by Gomez to Jota inside the penalty area, back it goes towards the, the halfway line. And Liverpool with Kwanzaa to his right, to Canate. Canate just very calmly gives it to Bradley. And now Elliot back towards the halfway line. Well, heavy touch from Canate and Fulham are all over him. Muniz put him under pressure. The ball bounced back to Kelleher, who in the right-back position hits it downfield. Jota wins the ball on the halfway line with Adarabayo, but that was a foul, says referee Hooper. And it's a free kick to Fulham. And he's just coming across to see how Adarabayo is. And while he does that, let's get the full-time news from Ellen Drode from Becky Glover. Leeds have extended their unbeaten run at Ellen Road to 15 matches. It's finished Leeds 1, Norwich 0, thanks to Patrick Bamford's first half header. Norwich were better after the break and went close just before the whistle, but Leeds had the most chances. Bamford, Ruta and Furbo nearly making it 2-0. The win tonight takes Leeds to within two points of the top two. It finished there, Leeds 1, Norwich 0. Adarabayo has got himself going again. 
We've got three minutes to go. Fulham one, Liverpool one on the night. But Liverpool with the edge on aggregate. Three goals to two. So Liverpool going through to uh, what would be a record 14th League Cup final. Liverpool with Jones. Now to Clark. Clark back towards the halfway line from uh, the 18-year-old Towsley blonde hair. Back to Van Dijk, the experienced Van Dijk, all the way back to the goalkeeper, Kelleher, who clears long downfield, and Tete just allows that to bounce out of play. Since, since bringing Canati on and going to the three centre-halves, Liverpool have been pretty comfortable. They seem to have weathered that Fulham storm. Fulham need to be patient. And actually, the key for them is quick switches of play. He had a 2v1 in the wide areas. They make the most when they get a crossing opportunity. Tete lifts it forward aerially. Muniz goes up, wins the header, bounces forward for Clark, though for Liverpool. Now Diaz, Diaz across. Elliot with the first time touch. Jota could be in. This to win it. But no, out comes Leno and grabs the ball at his feet. And Fulham now. He gives it out quickly to Harrison Reed. Now to Robinson on the left hand side as Fulham attack towards the halfway line. Robinson's ball over the top through the middle, but Van Dijk wins it in the air against Wilson. And then Robinson wins the throw in halfway inside the Liverpool half. 90 seconds of the 90 minutes to go. Then it's all about how much added time there is. With this scoreline, Liverpool are going through to the final. Fulham need to score to take it to extra time. William on the left hand side. Harrison Reed back to William again. William. Just next to the white line, infield towards Reed. Liverpool have got everyone back behind the ball. We'll bring you the live interviews on Five Live before half past ten tonight. Now Tete on the right. Tete's ball in. It's gone a long way. Canate was able to head it right across the box down into the Liverpool left back area where it's bouncing there. Wilson comes across, stabs it into the box. He's been able to find Polina. Now Tete in the area. Shot on the slide from Muniz. That was blocked. Comes back to Polina, who has sliced it horribly right across the field and out for a throw-in. Well, brilliant defending from the youngster. Kwanzaa, his moon is swivelled to get his shot off. Kwanzaa was there. Eight yards out to make the block. Huge block. Will there be one more chance? 25 seconds of the 90 minutes to go. So the fourth official, Tony Harrington, has got the ball, the board in his hands over there as the ball is cleared out of play for a throw-in to Fulham. Reed receives it from the throw from Robinson. Then back to Diop, who scored the equaliser. Back to Diop again. The Fulham supporters trying to do their bit. Robinson, only four minutes of added time. Robinson now tangling with, with Bradley, who's gone down. There were arms flailing in there. And that is given as a free kick to Liverpool, and I'm not surprised. Yeah, Robinson just pushes the ball past Bradley, tries to turn it into a foot race he actually pushes the ball far too far, Bradley gets in the line of the ball and Canate's there anyway to clean things up and he just pulls Bradley over and Liverpool in no rush to take this free kick they certainly are not, Kelleher's going to take it, Jurgen Klopp waits on the, on the sidelines Jurgen Klopp has lost only one semi-final in his managerial career that was with Liverpool against Southampton in this competition when whispering Claude Puel took his team through against Jurgen Klopp here is uh, Liverpool coming forward with Elliot now down towards the corner flag and Liverpool are taking it to the corner flag and Clark young Clark has got it there the teenager tried to win a throw in but he's conceded a throw in throw in to Fulham four minutes of added time we've already had a minute of it the question is, is there going to be one another chance for, well, for Fulham? Marco Silva is just praying for a half chance. Just give me a half chance. That's what they want. As the ball is cleared for Fulham towards the halfway line. It's taken a touch off a red shirt. It is a throw-in for... for uh, no, it hasn't. It's a throw-in for Liverpool. So young Bradley is going to, to take this. He's done well again tonight, hasn't he? Bradley, big, big occasion this. Yeah, I mean, you could question his defending yep. for, the, uh, for the Fulham goal, but... In the main. And other than that, yeah, he's been very consistent. Elliot turns one over the top. That's come off the head of, of Diop, who had to race to stop it from going out for a corner. The Liverpool fans, 3,000 of them, are in there on their feet in the in the put in the end. Liverpool um, miss hit a pass out towards the far side. It's a throw in to Fulham. 
two minutes of added time to go if you've just switched on this is the climax Fulham have got to score to take this to extra time and they've got to score in the next two minutes here's Reed. Harrison Reed scampering over the halfway line then Wilson wins the throw in just down here to our right Wilson all urgency gets the ball back from the uh, the ball boy takes it infield Polina they're claiming he was fouled as the challenge came in from Clark it bounced to Wilson who just sent the ball through for a goal kick yeah it just can understand the desperation from the Fulham players but trying to do things too quickly there Wilson and now Keller has taking his time over this and his yellow carded so he's booked the Liverpool goalkeeper you'll hear both of these teams matches in the FA Cup Five Live the place to listen to Fulham's match slightly controversial 7 o'clock on Saturday night against Newcastle here and then Liverpool Norwich on Sunday but Liverpool it looks as though this quest for success on four fronts is going to continue into a, a League Cup final unless Fulham can find something here in the final seconds Wilson ball halfway inside the Liverpool half Gomez then puts the ball out of play just to our right a number of Fulham fans are actually heading to the exit it lands in amongst their heads we've got 30 seconds to go Fulham have got to get it into the penalty area Adorabayo square from him to Diop Diop now to the left hand side to Robinson Robinson then back to the halfway line well here we go there's the long ball high and forward Jimenez is going to do well oh he does get to it heads it in field Wilson turning against Gomez then back to Jimenez again really Fulham need him in the middle and then oh the ball bounces to Wilson who is in an offside position and it's a free kick to Liverpool and I think that'll be it he's furious about the award this free kick for offside he did brilliantly initially yellow Wilson. card for Wilson for his protesting Made the most of the knockdown from Jimenez to keep the ball alive and Fulham in possession eventually they lose it it goes back to him and Liverpool look like they've just they've just done enough I think we've got to give them credit though they, they've been able to prevent Fulham from forcing that that one big final chance Jurgen Klopp bringing on a third central defender and that helped to see it out and see Liverpool through the final whistle goes Fulham fall short in a domestic cup semi-final once again they've only ever won one out of now seven and Liverpool are through to a record extending 14th league cup final of record winners of this competition Liverpool through after a 1-1 draw on the night 3-2 on aggregate Chris Sutton yeah, just, just a shame from Fulham's perspective the mistake in the first half from, from Leno letting a soft goal DS credited with the goal and then Liverpool looks really comfortable and Fulham second half stuck for a little bit flat but uh, got that goal and the stadium erupted then there was that belief but Klopp made the tactical change didn't he brought Canate and went to three uh, centre halves and Liverpool saw the game through pretty comfortably in the end the quadruple still on for Liverpool and they're into a cup final just like two years ago it'll be Liverpool against Chelsea in the Carabao Cup final at the end of next month and the Liverpool supporters are celebrating joyously they may have been to dozens scores and scores of cup finals but that doesn't dilute the feeling when your team gets there and they're celebrating their red smoke bonds going off banners are being held up in there as well so we've got Liverpool Chelsea in a, a League Cup or an FA Cup final for a fifth time and it will be three out of five finals the big finals at Wembley Liverpool against Chelsea and Jurgen Klopp goes to Van Dijk gives him a big hug Luis Diaz scoring that early opening goal for Liverpool and when Wilson came on that forced the equaliser on the night from Issa Diop but Fulham won Liverpool won and Liverpool are through 3-2 on aggregate and Steve Crossman is here with us in the Johnny Haynes stand Liverpool players just walking over to applaud their fans there was a big red sign held up by the Liverpool supporters which said on it imagine being us well they've done it again and I will say this Chris you know we always talk about the importance of the League Cup it is a hugely significant conversation and often we do it through the lens of what it means to smaller clubs 
we're looking at Liverpool fans there celebrating wildly getting into a record 13th League Cup final and you can see it still means a lot to them too Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I always think it's such an important competition, and there's the debate whether you know enough clubs take this competition seriously. But they get to the latter end of the competition, and they all do. But it's, it's the first possible uh, trophy you can win every season. And Liverpool in a final. Remember, they were trophyless last, uh, trophyless last season. So a big opportunity for Jurgen Klopp and his team to to get the trophy under the belt next month. Uh, there's lots of ways in which we'll react to this before Gordon Smart takes over at half past ten, Chris. But just in terms of the last 15 minutes of that game, the first thing that struck me is when that Fulham goal goes in, I'm expecting 15 minutes of intense Fulham pressure. Can Liverpool, with the atmosphere and everything going on, hold on? That's not how it turned out. They were very professional. They were, and it was, it was down to Jurgen Klopp's uh, substitution. I mean, a, amazing uh, reaction when Fulham did score, and you felt the belief go up level after level inside the stadium, and I thought the same as you. This is going to be Fulham really pushing Liverpool back, but Liverpool bringing Canate on, going to the three centre-halves. They really had control of the game and, and saw it out pretty comfortably. I've got to say, Fulham did make it a bit more uncomfortable, but, but they didn't create anything clear cut as such so in the end look I think Liverpool over the two legs deservedly go through but Fulham uh, you know they put up a decent fight uh, Tom Kearney has just walked right past us here he's uh, he's got a, a big jacket on now and he's just kind of limply applauding as he as he sort of shuffles off the pitch and when he turned towards us we're only about 10 yards away from the pitch here he did look very upset and quite emotional and, and there is part of me Chris that thinks this wasn't a free hit for Fulham they had chances there was enough in this game for them to be thinking what might have been wasn't there um, there was but you know the big moment was uh, the first goal and the importance of the first goal John talked about it in commentary you know Liverpool coming into this game 2-1 uh, ahead they think well we can silence this uh, the crowd at Craven Cottage if we get the first goal and, and you know virtually put the, the tie to bed and if it's if it's an unbelievably work goal or you know a, a, a world-class strike you sort of accept that if you're Fulham but I think Marco Silva will be bitterly disappointed about his, his goalkeeper and the way the first goal was conceded and then I thought you know watching the game we all thought it was pretty comfortable in the second half but the Diop goal which really came from nowhere because Liverpool they had, a, they had a little spell at the start of the second half Fulham but then Liverpool seemed to weather that storm and, and really gather the control back and then Diop gets the goal um, but fair play to, to, to Jurgen Klopp his squad are stretched at this moment in time the team are stretched um, but you know the substitution and, um, made the difference and they saw the game through really really comfortably a couple of the uh, Liverpool stars in front of us just beginning to do their TV interviews I can see uh, Virgil van Dijk there he was absolutely imperious tonight for Liverpool we will bring you live reaction over the course of the next 30 minutes as well so here at Craven Cottage the Fulham fans